here on Main Street in Anamosa, and across the street, get a shot of the top, you see the Niles Waters Savings Bank. And the windows up above on the second floor, that was E.G. Rawson's uh, medical practice. And the white door in the center, you walk in, you walked upstairs, and uh, basically to the left, that was his x-ray room and his examining room and whatnot. And that's been long closed. Now, behind us, which is a floor shop, or a little nice, it used to be the pool hall where I used to go shoot pool. And it was a very family friendly pool hall. And you, you went down the street that uh, Dr. Frank, my dentist, he's down here. Dr. Brown was, General Brown was another physician here in town, his office. But up above, we'd go in this door, and it was Dr. Frank, my dentist. I think he practiced without Novocaine, <laughs> but not. And then across the street, they had the dime store was down in the corner, Loyette's. Dime store, Amos department store was there. Mary Ann Amos was in Bob Godwin's class, but not. I can't remember what. So, I was Tom Rawson, and my dad was Dr. Rawson. Sure, sure. My dad was time. my dad was Glenn McLaughlin. Oh, <laughs> jeez. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so you lived right up there at 300 North Carnival. No, we were up on High Street. Well, who, right there was across. a Rawson that lived at 300 North Carolina. That Hill. was Merle, my yeah. dad's oh. brother. Okay. And okay. they were killed in a tragic car accident. I know. 1961. I know. Because, I was, because um, my grandparents lived at that house, 300 North Carolina. Hill. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know. B.I. and Nellie McLaughlin. Well, when I was a kid and delivered papers, uh, she would invite me in to warm up my gloves and... Uh -huh. and uh, on cold winter days, so it was nice. And I just, Dr. Frank was my dentist, and he was up on the second yeah. floor, yep. just pointing out. That's all been remodeled. That is an apartment now, a beautiful oh. apartment, right there on the corner. Oh, wonderful. Right there on the corner. But anyway, yeah, uh, Merrill and, uh, oh, what's her name, Rawson? Um, we took him to the depot in Marion one time. Oh, here too. And we got over there, and I was like eight months pregnant got over there. She forgot her hat box in oh. Anamosa. Well, we had plenty of time. So we had to come back, back. to Anamosa and get her hat box. Oh my. Well, it's nice meeting you. Where do you live And now? your name. Uh, my wife and I, we retired. We're in Dubuque, Iowa. In we were Dubuque? school teachers for over 30 years. Oh, okay. So. Oh, Dubuque's a, oh, that yeah. town is really coming Now give back. me your name again. Cecilia McLaughlin Hatcher. C Cecilia McLaughlin Hatcher. Okay. Yeah. We live in my folks' house now. Oh, you do? Yeah. Right Caddy Cornice from the Catholic Church. No, no, not no. One. Yeah, that's where they lived when they were first married. Okay. And we still own that, but no, right up here at 125 South Ford Street, it's on the National oh, Register of Historic Places sure. now. Sure, beautiful it's homes. Home. All right. Yeah. Well, the old high school's down, and a lot of things. Oh, it's changed been... a lot. Well, thank you. <laughs> Where the marquee, the American flag is. All handicapped accessible now, huh? Yeah, the Ni Niles Theater across the street. And we used to go movies there. I think we got in for 25 cents on Saturdays or something. Yeah, those are the stairs that, probably the original stairs that we 
we used to go up to Dad's office. Whew. It was Price Slate. He had a men's clothing store. He had a daughter, Sandra, who was in Bob Godwin's class. And my barber was over there where the Etland tile companies. And the post office is right up there. You can see it. Kind of the nice statuesque. Where'd John and Mom go, huh? And we'll take a little walk down here. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think the Tho Thomas Law Office is Jim Thomas. Does it say James? Yeah, on the door there. Uh, and uh, his family lived on the farm south of town. Locked. They're not open yet. Most of all, Center. Well, why yeah. you Well, when I was, uh, geez, I don't even know if I was in junior high, that I used to go in and set pins at the bowling alley. And I'd go way down and we'd sit behind, and they didn't have the automatic machines, and they would get out, and the young guys would come in, and sometimes they'd try to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have to jump out of the way. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it is open. I'm going in. Probably about in, uh, I don't even know about junior high, but we used to go in and set the pins down there. And we'd sit in the back on a ledge, they'd throw, and then we'd re rack them and set them up. That, uh, this must have been added later. Yeah, I think it might have been. It could have been here, and I just didn't pay any attention. But when I was in Canal, when I had my paper route, for the uh, Cedar Rapids uh, Gazette. I used to deliver, and they'd drop them over there, and then I'd pick them up, and my route was on the, kind of the west, southwest part of Anamosa, down towards the, the cemetery. I think the railroad ran down through here, along the side, the tracks it would go. I think that's the lumber yard over there. But uh, it used to slide down the, from the reformatory. And the creamery was a real going place at the time, you know, a lot of deliveries. And the, you said you the, had your paper, papers delivered. Yeah, they were delivered. The Gazette was dropped off there. We came down, picked them up, put them in our bags, and so what took kind off. So, of jobs did you have in town when you were growing up? What kind of things? Did you oh, I tend to guess. guess uh, pump gas and wash cars for John Dorothy down at Standard Station. It's not down there. We'll go by that. Uh, the bowling alley when I was quite young. And, and I asked you, what did you do with your money? Oh, I, I think I bought a 22 rifle and, and uh, uh, some weights, different things, you know, traded them off. <laughs> you said a bike? Oh, it was a, a Schwinn. Nice. Of course. <laughs> This would have been back in the 50s. So. And those are the loading docks back there? Yeah, I think that part and part. This building wasn't here. I don't know, older house or. Yeah. Are you able to just kind of cruise around town on your own? I mean. Oh, sure. You just walk around and didn't worry about anything. And Who were your buddies kids. that you chummed around with? Oh, Bob Godwin and, and uh, was one of them that. And then there was a guy that lived over in that area that we we would detassel corn and, and bale hay. That was one of the big things. Later on, we'd, there were about four of us got together and worked for the Carl Mardoff place and uh, baled hay and whatnot during summer. That, uh, what did, like, when you and Bob hung out, what were some things that you enjoyed doing? Oh, we would just hang out by, up there by the water tower, by the prison. And, play out in the fields and whatnot. <laughs> what, did you play ball or what did no, you? No, just. Hung out? Yeah, just hung out. Okay. Well, we're standing up high in Anamosa, the north end, where the old hospital used to be. This parking lot area, where Karen is and that, used to be, it was a three or four story old building. Then they built, this building here was the new hospital. 
and now that's been closed down and uh, it is a, a retirement area but the house that uh, we lived in is over here and it's kind of interesting it used to be the nuns lived there and it was three stories and it had a fire and it burned and dad bought it and rebuilt it in the configuration that it is now not the side building and the people that bought it and built later added on the two-story garage and This old tree used to be here. There was a walkway that came up from the walk. It came right by the house. And then there were steps that came up to the hospital. And the house behind is the Amon house. They had the clothing store. And uh, Mary Ann Amon uh, was a girlfriend of Bob Godwin's. <laughs> and we used to sneak up. They had two sons, one that was a priest. Ernst, and he used to pick up, he's a big strong guy. But this tree, Lou Bach brought in and planted. It was probably about for Idaf, down from uh, Makokata. And there was a little flower garden in the corner, and there was hedge along the way. And they trimmed out, they cut down some of the old trees. Uh, but now, and as you peek around, you look down, you see the reformatory where Dad worked. The main entrance where the warden stayed was there, and down below it was all grass. It wasn't a parking lot. Uh, it was just the garage and whatnot. And we used to come out in the yard. One of the watchtowers is right down there. You can see along the side of the, and the guards would be there, and as kids we'd get down and go, whoo, whoo, make different sounds and thought we were being cute. That was about the only thing we got in. I said, those hedges might be <laughs> still there. There was a fire pit back here behind, of course, that building wasn't there. And I think that, I don't know if it's a cherry tree, but there were a couple cherry trees there. But you had a nice view up here. You can see the courthouse where the flag is flying down there, down below. The train would go by, and in this summer you'd hear the whistle. Now the road down here, Matt, You see they had that gated off and that was gravel but the building down there is a cheese factory uh, where they made cheese but it wound out and further out was the uh, big bull farm that Bob Godwin's stepdad Alvin Luter ran. How is this the assistant warden's house right here with the front? Yes, with the little bunting on the front porch that was the deputy warden's and the newer house that they built after we left, uh, and I, I haven't noticed, but where that tower is, that used to be a water tower. And a couple times the guards called up to my mom and said that we were climbing it. <laughs> Got trouble. But I would cut through here, Mr. Miller lived, I'd cut through here to go to school, and I'd walk down and over across. That little Quonset home was there. Uh, gentleman had a wonderful garden back there and we as kids would sneak in the back and eat tomatoes. <laughs> they were delicious. We'd take a salt shaker along and whatnot. 
But this wasn't quite as light. This building wasn't here. Uh, and I think the West Falls owned that big white house there. They had a grocery store downtown, but it ran all through there. The Keith lived down there, and John David Hefner, who was a class, medical classmate of Bob Godwin's, his folks lived down there along, that's North High Street that runs there. Okay. All deliveries, please take to 405 East Main Street, Anamosa. This office is currently closed. Kind of looks torn up. So he was. Do you recall about when this was built and he started working here? No. Uh, he passed in 55. And the old hospital, I can't remember. I have to, I've got some old shots of the old hospital. Sister Ignatius used to uh, be one. She helped when I, I was born here. My mm -hmm. dad delivered me here. He delivered Billy Wooster and, and Lois's son. But Sister Ignatius was always a pal of mine. <laughs> she uh, was one of the nuns. And I can't, I should know, I should look it up when this was built. It would have. So this, this hospital that was here must Oh have yeah, been dad practiced. And this is where I was delivered. Now did your dad deliver you? Yes. Well, I can't remember the doctor. One of his friends, one of the fellow doctors actually did and he assisted along the way. But it was at the old hospital here, and Sister Ignatius was there for Bob. And okay, well, we're in Anamosa, and on Tom's and my first date, this is where, well, a real date, this is where we came, and he showed me everywhere that he had spent his childhood, and all told me all the things that he had done, and trouble he got into painting his Aunt, uh, Aunt George's car when she was visiting from Chicago and, oh, and oh well I th Aunt Georgia was visiting okay well I stand corrected once again um, the house was not as it is now the people who bought it some years ago have really made it look beautiful and built the beautiful garage and it's all been restuccoed and and it was thrilling for us because some houses go downhill and this one is it has a new life and we're happy about that and it was so convenient for Tom's dad because working at the reformatory he didn't have to go very far to be the reformatory doctor so you've already filmed that I guess and well the house behind us was the deputy warden's house and uh, Ray Purcell was a warden. And we lived over here, but there are a lot more trees out here. And there are shrubs down around. And uh, the sidewalk, we have Dad's office, was down. Alva Barber built a uh, building that they moved out to the farm. And that was behind this white pickup. We won't be going to the farm today. Um, but Tom had a horse there. He had a Palomino. What was his name? Rex. Rex. Rex was a Palomino horse. horse. Yes, and uh, it was just one of the things that he acquired. He didn't ever farm there. It was just, uh, it was an investment. And when we moved to Dubuque, and Ida had passed away, uh, so that would have been in 1973, right before, right before Natalie was, oh no, Natalie, you were born. Yeah. She passed away after you were born, but shortly after. And um, the people that had the farm had been making payments for many, many, many years. And when we were over on Rosewood, they would come once a year 
to visit us and make the payment for the farm. And I don't remember anymore when they would come, but I do remember the last time. And really, we were too young to appreciate it. They, she, uh, it was a brother, a sister and a brother. And they came to Rosewood, our house, and um, came in and, and they were so excited because they were making their final payment. And they weren't young. We were, though. We were very young. And so we just, it didn't, you know, making the final payment didn't have much import to us as it did to them. And I feel bad about that now that we didn't celebrate we'd be yeah. really, you know, celebrating with them. But Dad, did you say that also Grandpa would accept animals for payment? Like he didn't. Yes, know. during the Depression. That's, that's why he had the farm south of town, that uh, people didn't have the money, so they would hogs or well, not chickens and, and he said he needed a place to guns <laughs> he took all kinds of things yeah. and since you are taping this um, of course I didn't know him because he died when Tom was 12 but um, we have in the house right now in the bedroom we have his microscope that he used to look at slides uh, that he would do himself and we have his weights and measures in our new bookcase on Katrina Circle that he would weigh as he would make his own medicines and not really too many years ago we threw away because he we had a whole box of glass test tubes full of we didn't know what but all kinds of of chemicals uh, uh, powders and whatnot that he used to to use and he would uh, sharpened his needles himself, and you know, they were fearsome was, looking things. We got a shot with that. Yeah, needle. yeah, and but we, we thought we better get rid of them. We didn't know how stable those chemicals were. Yep. And Dad, where did you used to play with Bob Godwin? Uh, down here. Ah. That's the original garage <laughs> where the warden's car and uh, trustees slept up above, and they kept it well and clean, but it was all grass. So. We play, uh, what is it, Red Eye, Green Eye, uh, Captain May Eye, oh, yeah. uh, along the way, and played ball there. Down to the right, where it says John McLean Memorial Drive, down below the parking lot, that was all grass and, and beautiful flowers. The trustees just kept it, you know, unbelievable. And okay. Behind us here, where the tower is, I hadn't noticed. But the big water tower that Bob and I tried to crawl up, and the guards called up, told Bob that we were messing yeah. around. And yeah, whenever, whenever Tom and Bob were doing things they shouldn't be doing, the the guards would call. the guards would call his mother because they were all around. And okay. There until this last summer. Okay, let's hang back. Remember, when the funeral home, Gotch funeral home, they, there's a lay a road up there, kind of it was just grass, and they drove up and carried the casket down. Put mom there. September of 55 and uh, mom had planned we always went every summer up to Backbone State Park and uh, in 55 we didn't get away for the summer so mom rented a cabin for dad he wanted to get up there during the football season and I didn't want to go because I wanted to see Donnie Norton All-American in Iowa he was at Anamos he was a Blue Raider and uh, I wanted to see a place, so I stayed home, and that night they went up to Backbone and Cabin 13. Uh, Natalie and John went up there, spent 
but he passed away there and came back and the next morning I woke up and he was gone and uh, they had the funeral I can remember I think it was my fourth or fifth grade class at Anamosa they came down from the school and walked down to the congregational church for the service the whole class and uh, pay their respect he taught he was very big at teaching Sunday school in, in the church he, for years uh, and mom was up at Mayo's and was having health problems and she passed away there. I can remember the doctor coming out and asking me if I wanted any heroics done and, and uh, I asked him what he meant by heroics. He said, well, if her heart stopped, he said no, that she didn't want that. She just... So this is their final resting place. And uh, they picked out the stone, I think, together. It was their choice. And there were a lot, there were pine trees up above here. And down there were shade trees all along here. This was all shaded. But uh, the wind or whatnot has taken them. You can see. So.